everyone, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Autumn and I just like to talk about pretty much anything from the perspective of the average consumer. That's why I call myself Average Autumn. All right, so today we're talking about Beauty Pie. Um, if you're not familiar with Beauty Pie, I have done several videos talking about them and I'll have them linked up here throughout the video. And usually the beginning of each of these Beauty Pie videos, I just kind of update you on things and then I go through the products. I purchased these products over the last couple of months, so some of them I have had the chance to use and some of them I haven't. Um, and I do plan on doing some videos in the future to kind of review product by product to kind of compare to um, similar products on the market. So if you're not familiar with Beauty Pie though, I will just give you like a quick idea so you don't have to refer to another video. Um, you pay a membership fee to where then they give you an allowance based on how much of a membership you pay. And then uh, once you pay it and you get your allowance, you can then buy that amount of money worth of um, their luxury goods at a discounted price, which they say that discounted price is like at cost. So pretty much they're saying the only way they're making money is from your membership, right? So with that being said, they did just change their membership. So before, which I think you can still do it this way, but they changed their annual membership, I guess. So I now pay $59 annually and I get a $3,500 allowance um, to buy throughout the year. And I still have to buy the products, mind you, but I'm just buying them at cost. So before I was paying $30 a month for $300 a month allowance, and um, so this works out to be a much better deal. So if they are making their money just from the memberships only, I kind of find it hard to believe that they're like giving me a whole year's worth of purchasing for two months of membership, right? So I'm not 100% sold on the whole at cost thing. Um, but I do appreciate the fact now that I am only paying $59 and I get a $3,500 allowance, all right? Let's just go ahead and jump into the products that I purchased. All right, so this first thing I purchased, I purchased it right before I left for Army and I was planning on doing a video on it. Um, and then I got back from Army and it's no longer even on their website. But I do wanna talk about it um, because they did say that like in the future they may do similar collaborations. So I just kinda of wanna talk about this one in particular. So Patty Dubroff is a celebrity makeup artist and I guess she's also friends with the creator of Beauty Pie. And uh, cause that she had talked about going and getting facials from Marsha, I believe her name's Marsha Kilgore and um, she used to have like a spa and she would give people facials, right? So anyway, I think that's how they were friends from like a super long time ago. So Patty Dubroff created a little makeup kit um, from Beauty Pie products, some of which are new and then some of which um, are specific to this. And I'm thinking that they were saying that in the future, some of these products will be coming out on their own. I don't know which ones though. So um, since I don't know which ones, I'll just go ahead and talk about each one. So this kit is supposed to be like a full face of like quick makeup, multi-use products. And in my major bone that I have to pick with this kit is it only came in one shade and it's not very friendly towards darker people. And um, that's like the major bone I had to pick with it. And one product in particular is actually this Velvet Veil in the shade Doe, which again, their cream eyeshadows normally came in a stick form, but this cream eyeshadow happens to come in a pot, which makes me wonder if they're gonna come out with pot eyeshadows um, as well. But it's in this sort of like taupey shade, which if you are a, darker complected person, since this has like a white base under it, it's gonna look very chalky on your skin. And I'll just give like a quick swatch. If you're super dark, that's not gonna show up on you. Um, which it does seem kind of translucent, but at the same time, it's, it's not gonna show up on darker skin. The other thing is she did a couple of tutorials and a couple of lives online applying these products and talking about the different ways in which she uses them. 
This one she also like touted as being a contour for your face. So if you're saying it's multi-use and you can also use it as a contour on your face, it would make sense again to have different shades because this works as a contour for me. And for reference, I am, I think the second to lightest shade in their foundation range. Um, just kind of for reference. So, so yeah, again, the, the foundation shade range is still kind of limited, um, which they've given explanations for that before, and they have expanded it a little bit, um, but I just wanted to go ahead and point that out. Um, it comes with like this little double-sided um, sort of like smudger brush and eyeshadow brush. And so since it came with this, and she said she also uses it for contour, I think that was maybe a thought after the fact, because it doesn't blend well enough, at least unless your face is like, I would say like moisturized with like oils, <laughs> like to where it has like a nice um, area to like move around on. Um, it's not really formulated for that because it's already like in place on my hand. But anyway, it does come with that little brush. So then also it comes with a cheek product and this is, I would say relatively new. It's their cream blushes, but this color in particular is actually just for this kit and it's in the shade Sexy Berry. And for me then, I found this shade, again, well, it's supposed to be universal. This shade with my skin tone, I didn't find it very flattering, um, which maybe I'll have to play around with it a little bit more, but I didn't find this shade to be flattering. Um, some of her other shades of this are flattering, but in a universal kit, um, I can see maybe why they chose this one because it's a little bit deeper but um, I found that to be odd. And another crazy thing though about this product is she said in her lives that she also likes to pat this in on her lips. Um, I found the formula is a little bit dry for that, but if you're looking for kind of like that matte sort of pouty look, I think this would work for it. But then that also leads me to further confusion because it comes with a Shine Up Lip Color Balm in, oh, what is the shade of this one? Is it the same? Uh, in Sexy Berry, same shade. So why would she use this on her lips when she has this in the same shade um, in the stick form, which will, it didn't really make sense. So she, I feel like they could have gone with either another shade or another product or maybe a gloss or something like that. So I feel like if she wants to use this one on her lips, it's a little bit repetitive to also have this one. But then it came with this highlighting stick, which I actually really enjoy. Uh, the highlighting stick. I find that this color is a little bit closer to the discontinued color here in the pot um, versus the replacement for the product in the pot, which is the wand. Um, I find this color is a little bit sort of better and it can sheer out more. And it's also more versatile in the stick form. You can highlight the eyes and stuff. So I actually do enjoy this product. I think it's actually the best product in the whole kit. Um, and then it also just came with a mascara. It also came inside this little bag, which I'm not hating on. I'm perfectly fine with this bag. And it was a good value to get all of those products. I think I paid around $45 for all of them. So it wasn't too bad, but um, for Patty Dubroff being like this makeup artist, I feel like some of these products were afterthoughts. I think that um, they are very flattering for her skin tone, <laughs> but not skin tones of everybody when it's supposed to be a universal product. From a marketing standpoint though, when she applied the products and they all look great on her face when she's giving the tutorials, it might make somebody want to buy them um, based off of that. But if you've seen the tutorials and her applying the products, they do look beautiful on her because they're more suited for her. that though I think that's like the longest I'm going to talk about anything in particular it's just because I wanted to mention that all right so I purchased quite a few uh, skincare and beauty items that I'm just going to run quickly through um, if I've used any of these I will just give like a quick review and my first impressions of them some of them though are still in the boxes and I haven't used them um, let's start with skincare okay so the first thing I've actually gotten the most use out of out of all of these skincare items are these super active capsules 
and they have a couple of different kinds of capsules um, but these are supposed to be better for moisturizing and actually my favorite thing to use these for is I actually keep them here on my desk um, I use them before makeup so my products glide a little bit better because they do seem to have almost like a silicone in with them um, but it's like a mix between silicone and oil I have a hair in my mouth um, but it's like a mix between silicone and oil and I find that this actually works great as a primer for my makeup so I've really been enjoying that um, I haven't used these but these are their Japan Fusion Genius Lift Elixir. And the Japan Fusion line is actually one of the lines that's supposed to be really great for plumping the skin and for moisture. So um, this is something that I may actually use pre-makeup as well. Sometimes I'd like to use a nice serum on my face. Um, a lot of the times I use the Vichy 89 uh, on my face before I do my makeup. I have three mists. Um, <laughs> that I got from them. I have used them each a little bit. The first one is this triple hyaluronic acid. And this is just, again, something um, that I use for makeup prep. And the reason I use a lot of skincare in here before makeup prep is because I'll wash my face in the morning and then like go make my coffee, do that sort of stuff. And then my face might feel a little bit dry. And then so I'll douse some water on it and then put some um, makeup prep sort of skincare on. So this is really helpful for that. Um, another one that I got, which is pretty similar as far as in the way I use it, but this is their um, Uber Youth Super Elixir Microbiome Mist. And then the last one's really interesting for me. I've never had a product like this before, but this is a neck and chest super lift serum spray. And I don't know about you guys, but again, especially because of the pandemic and we haven't been leaving our house. And then also I had hamstring surgery. I've been laying around like a ton and I've been getting like this crease in my neck from like getting fat and then like reading stuff so then like my neck fat rolls are leaving marks in my neck so I'm like well it wouldn't hurt to maybe try to use some sort of serum <laughs> to like moisturize and plump that area up but these are their super drops brightening and oxygenating which I haven't used the bottle's pretty but I was kind of curious to see if it would do anything for my skin so um I just love a good serum so I feel like you can't go wrong. And most serums like contain like hyaluronic acid in it. So even if the other stuff uh, isn't that helpful, I feel like hyaluronic acid is just helpful across the board. Um, the next thing I got is their triple hyaluronic acid deep moisture miracle cream. And it's supposed to be plumping and all that good stuff. I haven't really used it enough to come down with like a concrete sort of like verdict on it. All right, and then the last skincare item I got is their super healthy skin hot oil double cleansing balm i love a good cleansing balm I like to help remove makeup all that stuff they have one from their plant fusion line as well that i've used and i do like um this one i think is supposed to be a little bit thinner because it's like a hot oil i think you're supposed to like really let it thin out where the other ones like are super thick balm again i've used it a couple times and it does work well i just love a really good cleansing balm all right and let's hop in to makeup then i do have a couple items that are like a mix between makeup and skincare and the first one is their primer so this is their wonder filter velvet finish primer and i got this just because of the description i thought maybe it might be kind of like a dupe for the tatcha primer and i'll show you like the texture i don't think it is because this is like a more whipped texture whereas in the top tatcha is like almost like a solid um and then you know you kind of rub it between your fingers and warm it up so I don't think it's really a dupe for that, but I can't wait to try this out. I haven't used it yet. And then I did get a replacement of the setting spray. I just really like their setting spray because it's in a small container. It's portable to where I can travel with it. And I think that overall it does a really good job of setting the makeup, which I haven't set my makeup today. It's more of like a glowy look, but I do have a little bit of powder on. Let's set it. sure why I'm like spraying out of the new bottle though considering I still have some left in my other one um, but that's fine oh I forgot I also got this primer too and this is more of one of their recent sort of primer um, releases and this one is like a pinky sort of like brightening pearl um, effect to it so if I there we go and really anything that um, makes the skin glow. I'm 
a fan of and I was a little bit afraid of this when I first squeezed it out because I'm like oh my gosh I'm olive complected this is going to make my skin look pink but then like once you see it's out on my hand it's actually just like clear um, it does kind of have like a small pink shift to it but then like once you put your makeup on it's not really noticeable all right and then I did purchase I think they have more colors but I purchased three of the shades of their brow gel and I got the clear, the perfect brown, and the blonde girl. And I actually bought the blonde girl one because I was doing um, or somebody's makeup prep for a wedding. We ended up not using a gel, so now I just have a blonde gel. I should probably just give that to her anyway. Um, but I haven't used them a ton. The reason I got them, though, is because I was out of my Glossier eyebrow gel. And these have those the same little teeny tiny wand. It's cheaper and the packaging is bigger. I don't know if you actually get more product in this versus the Glossier, but it looks like you do, but I don't know. But let me put a little bit in the front of my brows here because I feel like that's kind of balding. Yeah, I think it did a good job. I just added a little bit of color while moving it where it wanted to go. The clear one intrigued me and I, I looked at these online and I accidentally bought a second of the clear one because online it said that it helps your eyebrows grow. And I was like, oh my gosh, they have an eyebrow growth serum. And so I purchased the second one thinking that it was something I didn't have, but it was actually still this. So I think by it saying that it uh, conditions and protects is maybe their version of a growth serum. I don't really know if it's supposed to help the eyebrows grow, but just the way I read it, it kind of seemed like that's how they were marketing it. And then they did come out with a new powder highlight and it's their Triple Beauty Perfect Glowy Powder. And they also called the one that I really enjoyed their Triple Beauty Liquid Luminizer. So like I mentioned earlier, they discontinued um, two of my favorite products actually, which was their contour wand, which I happen to have right here. I use it every day. It's the dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury, exact same ingredients. They discontinued it. Um, but they also discontinued this, which is their uh, Triple Beauty Liquid Luminizer, which I talked about earlier. Um, the shade of it, as you can see, is like a peachy golden, but then like once on the skin, it just looks like fresh skin. Like once it's warmed up, put a little bit like right there, you can kind of see. Um, so that was really disappointing to me. I actually mentioned both of those products on Marsha Kilgore's Instagram when she was talking about like a new product coming out or something like that. And I was like, are you bringing those back? So at first I was like a little um, annoyed at her response because she's like, I know how hard it is paying retail for something. And that's not really my problem. So with this one, yes, I can get the Charlotte Tilbury one. With this, there was like nothing retail exactly like it. And she also told me in that post that the new wand that they have that came out around the time that this one disappeared was the same color, it was just thinned out or it was the same product, but it was just thinned out uh, to fit into the wand. Here's the thing though, I swatched them side by side. The other one is more pearl and goes wider, while this one is, again, like more like golden peachy. So since she made the comment that like, I know it's hard paying retail for stuff, I asked her, I'm like, then what's the equivalent to this? Like I have no problem paying retail for it if there is an equivalent that's the same exact color. And she said that they developed it in a lab and there is no equivalent. So I thought that was kind of like weird. But then she also made the comment that if she had backups that she, you know, she would mail one to me or sell one to me, you know, which I thought was super nice, but I was a little bit disappointed. Anyway, all of this to say is they came out with a powder highlight as well. And this powder highlight I find to actually be closer in color than the highlight that was supposed to um, replace that. And this is their Triple Beauty Perfect Glowy Powder in Glowio. And again, this one isn't as peachy, but it is kind of like a pearl with a hint of um, gold to it, which, why do I put stuff? Yeah, it's like right there. So I find that is a, uh, better dupe than the the stick version, which I have the stick version over there. I should have pulled it out to compare, but I didn't. 
Anyway, so I actually really do like this highlight. I think it's really nice. Um, their highlighter formula that they've had in the past, one looked kind of like swirled and it was like too much. And then one was like a flower, which was kind of pink leaning. It was really beautiful, a beautiful formula. All right, so I took a quick break to go grab my daughter from school and I am gonna continue on with the cosmetics here. Sticking with cheap products, they came out with this little cheek palette and it reminds me a lot of the four pan NARS palettes, which um, I will put here on the screen. They came out around the same time though. Um, it also reminds me of the six pan that I have over there in my box. I have a haul coming up that they also came out with actually around the exact same time as this as well. And this formula is closer to the six pan that I'm talking about. Again, it's here on the screen. Anyway, um, this has a highlighter, a bronzer, and blushes. This is kind of like that baked gel texture. I guess it's the best way to describe it. I don't know if it says on here what it is, but there's like no kick up in these. It's just kind of like that formula to where you just kind of get like a sheer sort of color without any kick up whatsoever. Like there's no powder kick up on this. And then here are the four shades. I actually really like this formula. I didn't notice though when I bought it that actually one of the blush shades in here, uh, which is Super Juju, maybe both of them are, but I know for a fact that I have Super Juju all by itself in a single blush. And I didn't realize that they had repeated the blushes and stuck them in here. But the highlighter and bronzer, I know for sure are uh, new shades. They also came out with a trio of eyeshadow sticks. And there are other eyeshadow sticks that they have. The packaging's completely different. With these, the packaging represents the color on the inside. Um, I'll tell you now, I actually had to go pull two of these out of my declutter box, not because the product isn't good, just because they're not really colors I see myself using. Um, this blue one, I got it before summer and I was hoping that maybe it would be cool to kind of add like a cool pop of color, but this formula seems like it's a little bit different than the other ones I have. The way it shears out is like you can kind of see the skin through it. Um, and it's a little bit patchy. Um, again, I've only used it on my hand, which you have like all those creases and stuff in your hand. So maybe it goes differently on the eyes. But again, you have like creases and stuff on your eyelid. So I don't know. I The formula of these just seems to be a little bit different, at least the blue one in particular. So there's the rose goldish one and then there's like the more copper color. And honestly, I think it's just the blue one that's a little bit off because these, when you spread them out, they don't seem as patchy. I did pick up two brushes from them. The first one is their Pro Angled Concealer Brush. And this one is almost like the pad of a finger when you're doing your concealer. The brush is dirty because I've used it, but it just kind of gets in there. So if like you didn't want to use your finger to kind of go in, and pat out your concealer. This is a perfect option. Bless you. Thank you. This is a perfect option for you. Um, the only thing is, is when I'm doing makeup on myself, I prefer to have kind of the warmth of my fingers to really help work my concealer in. But if you are doing makeup on somebody else and you don't feel comfortable putting your fingers all over their face, this is a really good option. Um, they also came out with this double-sided brush. I don't know what it's called. It doesn't say on the brush itself, but it came out around the same time this came out. So I went ahead and bought it because I thought it would be useful to use into the pans, especially like the highlight side. I thought it might be useful. Um, and the brush is actually about the size of each pan, which works out. A lot of the times with these smaller pans in palettes, it's hard to find a brush that actually works in the pans or fits into the pans instead of like just spilling over into the next shade, if that makes sense. So I also picked up some of Beauty Pie's nail polishes. Um, I've owned several already, and usually they do more neutral colors and things like that, and that's usually what I sort of gravitate towards. I think recently, since I haven't been using my hands as much because I've been laid up, I've been doing more fun colors instead of like a sheer nude. Um, but I did actually pick up two of their top coats because it's my favorite top coat out of any top coat ever. I picked up three of their other polishes and these two look really similar. And for some reason, I didn't know that I already owned um, this shade, which, where did it go? 
super nude. I actually already own it. I looked at my nail polishes. So um, if you wait till the end of this video, I will do a quick giveaway to where if you're interested in it, um, I'll tell you how to get it. But I picked up another nude, which this shade is Go To Girl. And it's just like a light nude pink. And then I got this really deep shade called Black Cherry Bomb, which reminds me a lot of the Clinique Black Honey Nail Polish. And I don't know if that is still made anymore, um, but it reminded me a lot of that. And in the like fall and winter, I really like super um, deep shades like this on my toes and my nails. All right, and then the last things I ordered were some candles. So again, with it fall and winter coming up, I really like to have a candle burning and for the house to smell nice. So I decided to pick some more candles up. So they're at cost price on these candles runs around the $20 mark. Some are more expensive, some are less expensive. But these candles smell terrific. And some of them are repurchases and then um, there may be like a new scent in here, but, but we'll just uh, get to that when we come up on it. So also I just tore it off and they come packaged like this and then into the box, but then the actual outer box looks like this. Um, they're each different colors depending on the scent. The way that they make their candle jars and the way they package it reminds me a lot of, um, I believe it's like diptyque candles, um, which again, I'll have here on the screen. So you kind of have like a reference. This first one is leather, violet leaves and labdanum. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. And these, these scents are right up my alley. So um, they're fragrances, like they're perfumes. Not a huge fan of those and I got rid of all of them. However, they just sneak peeked a new fragrance and they didn't give any of the notes, but by the name, I'm thinking that it might possibly be more along the lines of the candles or at least I'm hoping it is. So hopefully maybe somebody at Beauty Pie I seriously doubt it, watched my video and saw that I wanted their perfumes to smell as good as their candles because their perfumes are not it. But I will buy that fragrance when it comes out and I will um, give you my opinion on it. But anyway, yeah, so that's the first one. Let me stick it back here in the box. So by the way, I keep my candles in a closet in my living room and I think I was down to like one more beauty pie candle other than I had like the three packs and then I gave away some out of one of the three packs, um, which are the little tiny ones. Um, but that closet always smells so good because these candles, without even burning them, you can smell it. Like they're actually really high quality, super nice candles and the jars are really nice too. And I actually saved the jars and put brushes in them, although this looks disgusting. <laughs> um, but I do save the jars for candles. Also, I don't know if you can see it or not yet yeah, right there. I just made myself a um, protein shake in the blender and got some on my shirt. I think this is just like water, but um, I'm a mess. Okay, so then the next one, yeah, this is a repurchase and this is actually currently what I have burning in the living room. Well, it's not burning right now, but this is one I have out for burning. Um, and again, I never know how to pronounce anything, but this is Rev de Dez. I don't know. Dez? Rev Dez. Rev Dez. Is that right? Rev Dez. I don't know. Oh, so the notes are uh, mint, eucalyptus, and lemon. Um, and then basil, crisp green leaves, and then ginger. Oh my gosh you really get the mint and the basil together. It's so good. So, so, so good. Um, Amy from Saver Salvage Scent came over and this is what I had burning when she came over and she even commented on how good it smelled. This one is new to me. This is called Casa Coco and it's from their bronze collection. So I'm wondering if this was maybe one that they had out in the summer um, and it says, it's this musky luxury scented candle sends out fresh top notes of blood orange, coconut, vanilla, tonka bean. And it says it smells like warm citrusy sunshine on your skin. Ooh, and then the container is actually really pretty. Yeah, this smells so nice. Maybe when I'm missing summer and the winter, I'll burn this one. Um, 
Mm, yeah. I mean, all their candles are really good. The smell on that one is not as strong as the other two that I just opened, but it is a really beautiful, soft coconut smell. I also picked up sweet tobacco, cedar wood, and vanilla. It's not as strong as the others either, um, but it is sweet. I almost like smell like lemon in it. Lemon's not listed though, but to me, this smells uh, vaguely of lemon. Um, so maybe they put some of the wrong candle in there. Maybe I'll have to burn it. Let me let me rub it though with my hand. Sometimes that kind of releases. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to burn it. I don't know why it smells like lemon to me right now. Maybe my nose is off though because I just did a fall perfume video where I showed like over 20 perfumes and I smelled every single one of them. Okay, and then this last one is one of my favorites from them and it is a repurchase and this is again something I can't pronounce. Bahia da Miel. Bahia de Mel. Bahia de Miel. Bahia da Miel. Um, let me see if it still smells strong or if I've just gone nose blind for the day. Yeah, this one is strong. Um, again, green basil, licorice, um, balsam fir, guayac wood, honey, and seductive vanilla musk. This one just smells expensive. Um, but again, yeah, it's a repurchase. I think that's what my brushes are in right now. Yeah, it's the kind of container my brushes are in. Um, oh my gosh, this smells so good. Perfect for fall. Um, I feel like I'm saying everything's perfect for fall right now. It's a total like YouTuber thing, especially several years ago when everybody was doing their fall videos and everything was perfect for fall. Okay, but anyway, <laughs> that is everything I have to show you and everything I have to say about this. Um, so if you were curious as to how you can get this nail polish, I'll mail it to you. All you have to do is comment below, give me your Instagram handle, and then also just make sure you are subscribed to this channel and you like the video. And, and I'll keep this giveaway open until the 5th. And then on the 5th, I will choose someone and um, I'll mail this out to you. Uh, you do have to be within the United States though because it is a nail polish and so there are restrictions on that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I would love to hear from you. Tell me what some of your favorite products are from Beauty Pie and I will talk to you all soon. Bye!